Hi everyone, Helen Carnate here. I'm an experienced Beat Saber mapper, mapping support for BSMG, and staff for the Mapping Discord. I got into mapping because I couldn't find songs I liked in difficulties that I could play. Today you are going to learn how to set up, edit, and upload your own custom map, and we're going to do it with up-to-date tools and correct information. We're going through six key steps to making a Beat Saber map. New mappers will typically spend 15 to 20 hours to make their first solid map, and it's worth every minute. All right, let's get your software up and running. Mediocre Map Assistant 2 is the most common and up-to-date map editor. Go to the GitHub link in the description and grab the file called mma2.zip. Extract the zip file and open the application. Once you're in, you'll see two empty fields for the paths to a couple of important Beat Saber folders. If you have PC Beat Saber, navigate to your custom levels folder. I'm an Oculus user, so I'll go to Program Files, Oculus, Software, Software, Hyperbolic Magnetism Beat Saber, Beat Saber underscore data. Steam users will have a slightly different path to their files. Click on the bar at the top to select, then copy the folder path. Go back to MMA2 and paste it in. Do the same thing for your custom WIP Levels folder, which should be in the same location. If you don't have one, go ahead and create it. If you're on a Quest or don't have VR at all, just pick a location on your PC and create one folder called Custom Levels and another called Custom WIP Levels. You can also download and extract the Quick Start zip in the description below. Click the Apply button to go to your song selection screen. There are several general settings over on the right side of your screen. If you're making your first map, you'll be fine to use the defaults that are here. Double check to make sure your folder paths are showing here though. For more detailed help getting MMA2 up and running, head over to the BSMG wiki to find the complete user guide. Before we finish this step, let's get your first song folder set up. In the Create New Level field at the bottom of your screen, type the name of the map you're making. I'm going to use Spectre by Alan Walker from No Copyright Sounds, so I'll type Spectre and click Create Level. This makes an empty folder inside custom WIP levels where you'll save your audio and cover image files. We're going to come back here once our audio is set up, but before we do, you'll need an audio editor for syncing and converting your song. Audacity is a free editor available at audacityteam.org. Click download and choose your OS, then grab the right zip file. Extract the zip and the application is ready to go. Now that your software is set up, it's time to get your audio ready. For your first map, try to find a song with a clear, consistent beat to follow. You'll also need to find the BPM of the song and download a cover image. Download the highest quality audio you can find. This will make the beats easier to see in the editor and sound better for everyone. You can find decent audio on Amazon, iTunes, Google Music, Bandcamp, and more. Only use a YouTube rip as a last resort. Most files are available as MP3s, which don't work with Beat Saber. Online converters often have issues and won't help you sync the song with the beat, so we'll need Audacity to convert it to the OGG format. Other tutorials skip over how to sync up your audio, but this is honestly one of the most important parts of making your map. If the beats of your song aren't lined up with the beat markers in the map editor, you're going to have a really bad time. First, you need to find the BPM of your song. There are three methods you can use to do this, each with their own pros and cons. One, Google it. Search for your song, plus the artist, plus the word BPM. Keep in mind that the internet lies, so be sure to check a few sites to be safe. Number two, tap it out using a site like all8.com. Or number three, use a step mania tool called Aero Vortex to find both the BPM and the offset you need to line up your song. You can download it from the BSMG wiki. We are going to use the Aero Vortex method here as it's the fastest and most reliable for getting your audio up and running. You can get a lot more info on each of these methods on the basic audio setup page of the wiki. I'm gonna drag my song into Audacity and quickly go to File, Export, Export as OGG, but be sure to leave Audacity open. Now I'm going to drag my new OGG file into Aero Vortex. Press Shift S to open the BPM window and click Find BPM. If you picked a good song, you should only see one result. Remember this number to the decimal because you'll need it later. 
Click Apply BPM to shift your whole track in line with the beat. You'll see your music offset change. You need about two seconds of silence before the first sound you want to map to avoid what's called a hot start. So click the one button with an up arrow until the offset number is close to 2.000. Hit F3 to turn on beat ticks, then click around at the beginning, middle, and end of your song to check that everything is on time. Now here's why we left Audacity open. Go back to Audacity and click Generate, Silence, enter your offset from Arrow Vortex here, then hit OK. You'll see your whole track shift over a tiny bit. Now you have a perfectly synced audio file with the right amount of silence. Re-export your audio, call it song.ogg, and save it to the song folder you created when you set up MMA2. Now that your audio is synced and saved to the right spot, you're ready to set up your map and get going. Let's head back to Mediocre Map Assistant. Before we can start placing blocks, we need to complete the map info on the left side of the screen. Song name is literally the name of your song. Song sub name is optional and only used for things like featured artists or remixes. Song artist is the recording artist, and mapper is you. This is how players will see your name in game. BPM is the value you looked up earlier. For this particular song, it's 128.0 BPM. Don't round off decimals here or your editor will be out of alignment. As long as you saved your audio file as song.ogg in your map folder, you can leave the audio file name field alone. Ignore preview start time and duration for now. Next, you're going to need some cover art for your map. Find a pic that you like that's at least 250 pixels on a side, perfectly square, and either JPEG or PNG format. You can use something as simple as paint to size and or crop your image, then save it as cover.jpg or cover.png inside your song folder. The file name listed here should match what you saved in your song folder and it's case sensitive. You can choose which in-game environment you want to use here. The environment will affect the way that your lighting looks. Ignore the custom platform field and click save song info. This is going to create your critical song info file. Next up, it's time to add your first difficulty. Click the Add Difficulty button and then choose which level you want to make from the difficulty dropdown. Leave your characteristic as standard, though this is where you'd change it if you were making a no arrows or one saber level. The difficulty label allows you to give your level a custom name, but leave this blank to keep the default. Start offset can be ignored because your audio has been perfectly lined up ahead of time. Note Jump Speed and Spawn Distance modifier control how quickly the block appears to move at you in game. 12 is the default here, but shouldn't really be used above hard. If you click on this number, you want the half jump duration to be 1.5 to 2.5, and the jump distance to be 24 to 30-ish. So before you release, you'll need to play with your note jump speed and spawn modifier until they're in a happy place. You can read a lot more about note jump speed on the BSMG wiki. Before you move on, click Apply Modifications to save. Open up your song folder to confirm that everything is in the right spot. You should see song.ogg, cover.jpg, info.dat, and a difficulty.dat file. Now hit edit level to enter the editor. But before we start placing blocks, let's take a little tour. You are looking at the default view of the track. The one on the left is for mapping, and the one on the right is for lighting. The four by three grid you see is the cursor, which represents your available mapping area. If you scroll your mouse wheel, it'll move back and forth on the track. The fat lines with numbers on the track mark each beat, and the thin lines mark a quarter of a beat. In the bottom left is the cursor precision adjustment. Hold control and scroll to change the precision in fractions of a beat. So one one precision moves the cursor one beat at a time. One four precision moves the cursor a quarter of a beat at a time. To the far left is your audio track waveform. You'll notice that the spikes in the waveform line up perfectly with the lines on the track. If yours don't, consult the wiki for more help with audio setup before you start placing blocks. Now that you're oriented to the track, you can use your camera to look around. Hold the right mouse button and move your mouse to look around. W, A, S, and D will move you relative to the cursor. Shift will move you down and space will move you up. Hit backspace to return to the default camera position. There are multiple ways to do every action in MMA2. Once you get used to hotkeys, your mapping will really start to pick up speed. 
hit escape to view a list of most hotkeys, but check the BSMG wiki for a comprehensive list of all the secret tricks. On the right side of your screen, you can choose to place red blocks, blue blocks, bombs, and walls, mirror your selections, and press delete. The hotkeys for these common commands are one for red, two for blue, three for bombs, and four for walls. To place an object, just left click with your mouse. Remember that red blocks are for your left hand and blue blocks are for your right hand. Use W, A, S, and D to make directional arrows and press F to make dot blocks. Diagonal arrows just combine cardinal directions, so to make an up left block, you would press W and A together. Placing walls requires two clicks, click to place, scroll to make your wall longer or shorter, then click to drop it. While hovering over an object, press shift and the middle mouse button to delete it, press the middle mouse button alone to change the color of the block, or hold down alt and press W, A, S, D, or F to change the orientation of a block. Shift click on one or more blocks to select them, or you can click control and then scroll down the track to select large sections. This is helpful for mirroring or copy pasting long selections of the same music. Since this tutorial is an overview, we're not going to get into pattern theory here, but there are a lot of other resources available to help you learn what to map, not just how to map. Before we jump into lighting, there's one more critical tool that you should know about. Hit shift tab to open MMA2's error checker function. Leave the max time set to default when you check for vision blocks. These usually happen when you place blocks in the center two positions on the cursor. Set the max time to 5.00 when you check for double directionals. That's when you make your player swing in the same direction with the same hand back to back. Click stats panel to see a whole bunch of cool information about your map, like overall notes per second and the distribution of blocks across rows. Finally, you wanna save your work early and often by pressing Control S. Now let's talk a little bit about lighting. Turn your camera around to look at the right side of the track and hit the tab key to change your controls. This is the lighting track and you'll notice that each lane is labeled with what it controls. Your cursor is now stubby since we don't need 3D for lighting, but otherwise functions the same way. There are five primary light events for each in-game environment. Back top lasers are usually a static X in the very back of the environment. Track ring lasers light up the large rings around the track. Left and right lasers trigger the rotating arrays on either side of the environment. And center lasers, otherwise known as bottom back sides, are the static track side lasers. There are four types of lighting effects that you can place in either color in any of these positions. You can either click the type over to the right, or you can use these handy dandy hotkeys. W creates an on block where a light turns on and stays on until it's turned off. S creates an off block. This will instantly shut off any light you place it after. A creates a flash block, which flashes brightly, then quickly fades to the brightness of an on and stays on. D creates a fade block, which also flashes brightly, but instead of fading to an on, it keeps fading all the way to black over a second or two. One will give you a red event and two will give you a blue event. You can switch between these just like you can switch block directions by hovering, holding alt and pressing the letter you want. The lighting preview in MMA2 is pretty terrible, but it gives you a rough idea of what things are going to look like. It's really important to check everything in game before you call it done. In addition to the lights, you have several actions you can place. The way these look varies a lot from environment to environment. Boost event swaps the light colors to a second pair, which is set in the editor or by the environment. Ring rotation randomly spins the large track rings for every block placed. Small ring zoom makes any inner rings your environment might have zoom in and out with each placement. Left and right laser speed controls how quickly your side lasers rotate. Hover over these blocks, hold Alt, and scroll your mouse to change the value from zero, which is static, to 20, which is pew pew fast. Finally, the BPM change lane is where you can change the BPM of your song if you've picked something that changes tempo or an older song that wasn't played to a metronome. If you want to get fancy and create strobing effects, you can do that by right-clicking the on, fade, or flash event type. You'll notice that the button is now striped and you get some extra controls. Strobe duration sets how many beats the strobe will last and the interval determines how fast you want it to strobe. If your light blocks look weird, you may want to up the editor scale, basically giving more space between each beat. Hit escape to open the options menu and change the editor scale to something like 800. You can change it back at any time. You can copy and paste lights the same way you do blocks. Shift click to select one or more blocks or control click to begin box select 
and click once more to close your selection. And yes, you can copy and paste lights across difficulties. That's going to do it for our quick overview of how to use the MMA2 editor. So you've put time into making your map and you think it's finished. What now? You should have played your map while you were working on it, but if you haven't, you definitely need to test it before you release. If you're a PC VR user and you set up your song in your custom whip levels folder, then all you need to do is fire up Beat Saber, go to the custom levels section, and then the whip levels tab. Click the practice button to play in practice mode. If you're a Quest user, check out the playtesting instructions on the BSMG wiki. It's really important to get your map playtested by someone else. You've just spent who knows how many hours putting this thing together, you know it inside and out, and you can become blind to problematic patterns. The great news is that you can post your pre-release zip file to the Test Plays channel on the BSMG Discord to get outside feedback from knowledgeable mappers. This gives you a chance to polish things up before you release. To create your zip file, open your song info screen and look for the Package to Zip button. Click that bad boy and it'll automatically create a compressed zip file with only the files you need. By default, the zip will be saved inside your song folder. Once you've got things just right, congratulations, you've made it! You're ready to publish your map for the world to play. Use the package to zip function to create your final file. Next, you'll need an account over at beatsaver.com. This is the repository for all custom maps. Once your account is verified, log in and click the upload button. From here, you'll add a title, which is typically the artist and song name, then add a short description. Click choose a file to grab your final zip, click upload, and then pat yourself on the back. You just released a map. If you ran into issues with the upload, check the common problems list. And if that doesn't help, consult the troubleshooting section of the wiki or head to the BSMG Discord for support. Within a few minutes, your map will mirror over to the Beast Saber site, where it can be more easily found by hundreds of thousands of players and maybe even get put into their curator recommended feed. Mapping is a ton of work and I'm super proud of you all for giving it a try. This tutorial has been a massive oversimplification of the process. So when you have questions, your best bets are to read through the BSMG mapping wiki, come hang out with us in mapping discussion on the BSMG Discord or join us in the Beat Saber mapping Discord. Thanks to everybody for watching. Happy mapping!